don't fear to fail. It's in failing that we learn the most. So don't fear it, actually embrace it and fail, but fail fast and then get right back up again. We truly believe that social business ideas and projects will help us to solve some of the world's biggest problems. Join us here where passion meets vision and positive impact. Good evening, everybody. It's my thrill to welcome you to the kickoff event of the Social Ideas Challenge. My name is Dr. Susan Amat, and that video you just saw included some incredible highlights of last year's, and we know this year is going to surpass every expectation. On behalf of the Hemispheric University Consortium, we welcome you to this launch of the second Social Ideas Challenge, co-hosted by Pontifica Universidad Católica de Chile and the University of Miami Herbert School of Business. The Huck Social Ideas Challenge aims to promote impactful social entrepreneurship. We believe there is great creativity, innovation, and knowledge within our youth, and we're inviting our students throughout the hemisphere to find great ideas aimed at solving some of the pressing social issues that we confront today in society. The challenge is framed within the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and other participating institutions include the Universidad San Francisco de Quito in Ecuador, Universidad Andres Belos in Chile, and the Universidad Peruana Catellano Heredia in Peru. Today's launch is the first of four stages that will conclude in the international contest among the finalists at the annual Emerge Americas Forum in April 2023. We're going to start with a video of some of our leadership explaining why this is so important. Universidad San Francisco de Quito is excited to participate in the so Hook Social Ideas Challenge. Participating in the Social Ideas Challenge is a great opportunity for students to use their skills and knowledge acquired in their academic journey and apply them to creative viable solutions that address critical real-world issues through the lens of entrepreneurship. You will be exposed to teams of international students and professors through an enriching experience that will surely provide you with tools to apply your innovative ideas in the world in real world settings. I encourage you all to apply and we'll be looking forward to see results of your work. We welcome you to visit our campuses in Quito, the Galápagos and the Amazon. Good luck. Estimada comunidad, con mucha alegría les saludo en el lanzamiento de este desafío que estoy seguro será memorable para todos nuestros estudiantes. Soy un convencido de que la humanidad necesita jóvenes como ustedes dispuestos a ser verdaderos agentes de cambio que respondan a la misión de resolver problemáticas sociales reales. Quisiera enviar un gran saludo a esta nueva generación de líderes. Tenemos las más grandes expectativas respecto de su participación. Los invito a hacer historia 
y a pensar en grande. Espero que puedan aprovechar al máximo esta instancia y que sea el inicio de una nueva forma de mirar la realidad. As Vice President for International Affairs at UC Chile, I am happy to welcome you to this first international competition of the Hemispheric University Consortium Network. Our university is committed to finding solutions to problems with a global approach, in which we believe that innovation is not only a bridge to apply our creativity to solve problems, but these solutions should have an impact on our society. I hope this contest is a learning space where you can apply all your knowledge, your abilities, your skills, and you can put your heart on it. So good luck, and I wish you all the best. Hi, my name is Hari Natarajan, and I'm Vice Dean of Business Programs at the Miami Harvard Business. Now we all know that we face many challenges as a society. The UN, through its Sustainable Development Goals, has clearly identified the priorities for us to work on. Now, what better way to address these societal goals than to bring together the best and brightest students from across the hemisphere to help us understand and tackle these challenges. So, to all of our students, you are the leaders for the future. I look forward to hearing from all of you on how we can come together and work on these challenges and build and shape a better future for all of us. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Mildred de Reyesa, Academic Director for the Business School at Tecnológico de Monterrey. I am very happy to have this space to share a few words with you. At Tecnológico de Monterrey, we are very excited to be part of this international contest, the Social Ideas Challenge. We truly believe that social business ideas and projects will help us to solve some of the world's biggest problems. There is a new generation of young entrepreneurs that aim to add meaningful value to our society and the world. And that's why I invite you to be part of this international contest. Join us here where passion meets vision and positive impact. See you soon. Reciba un cordial saludo de la Universidad Peruana Cayetano Heredia. Creemos que cada uno de ustedes tienen ideas poderosas que pueden ayudar a resolver la problemática y desafíos que enfrenta la sociedad. Invitamos a todos a participar en esta segunda edición del Hub Social Ideas Challenge y estamos seguros que esta experiencia generará un fortalecimiento en sus capacidades y en su desarrollo personal y profesional. Creemos en ustedes, en la nueva generación que puede aportar muchas soluciones a la sociedad. Felicitaciones. Thank you so much to our incredible partners. Well, without any further ado, I'm so excited to introduce you to our incredible panel, some of whom I've been working with for years, and I'm thrilled to have you get to meet them and ask your questions. So you can start adding your questions to the chat as they speak, and then we'll be going back as we go to the panel and hearing from you. So without any further ado, I'd first like to introduce Melissa Medina, who's done incredible work, not just in South Florida, but throughout the ecosystem and her founding of the Emerge Americas program and conference, which has been one of the real pillars of transforming South Florida into a tech hub. So welcome, Melissa Medina. Next up is Rodolfo Yola, the co-founder and CEO of Microbytes. I think one of the of my co bites. I think one of the cool things about Rodolfo is the fact that he spent years in energy, then moved to the food sector where he's currently revolutionizing fungi as food, and he's based in Chile. Next up, Magali Blas. She's a professor of public health in Peru and is committed to improving the lives of women and children throughout the Amazon region as the director of the Mama River Program. I can't wait to hear more about that. And finally, Juan Diego Vasquez, the CTO of Payphone, who's ensuring accessibility and financial inclusiveness across the region. So we're gonna start with Melissa. We're thrilled to have this star-studded panel. Without any further ado, Melissa, would love to hear where you started with the concept of Emerge Americas and how it came to fruition, which seemed like an overnight success, but it was years in the making to get to this incredible point. 
Yes, thank you, Susan. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank you for bringing me back this year. I wanna thank Gabriela and the entire team at University of Miami. It's been such an honor to partner with UM and helping really be a part of this Hemispheric University Consortium. Amazing to see all the incredible um, faculty members speaking from each of the universities about this social ideals challenge and then for it to kind of end, end and come together um, at Emerge in April. This truly is a dream come true. I think it's said on the video, um, today an idea, tomorrow reality. And I, I feel like that hit home because Emerge truly was an idea. It didn't even have a name when we were kind of thinking through, you know, of bringing together the full tech ecosystem under one roof in Miami, which is how can we bring together entrepreneurs, investors, academia, government and global executives from around the world together in Miami to help begin or to help build a thriving tech uh, hub and ecosystem in South Florida. And this is circa 2011, 2012, when we were first discussing this idea. So this is almost a decade ago. And it's incredible. I've had the pleasure of being at every one. And when I think about those first meetings and how it developed, and quite frankly, how impactful it's been, not just for the big tech companies who are all front and center with booths and amazing swag, but really the startups that have been part of this initiative from the beginning and how they've coalesced to create their own community. And now some of the nice big success stories out of South Florida really have emerged to thank for it. Oh, thank you. I think um, you said it best when you said you were a part of this from the beginning and you were. Um, and I think we're truly grateful for people like you that believed in us from day one. I think if I could give a piece of advice for people building a business is to to evangelize it, but also to take in as many ideas as possible um, about your effort. So when we launched the concept of Emerge, we created what we called sort of a steering committee of stakeholders that we believed could actually help us build this together, become a part of it. So you became an essential part of it. UM became an essential part of it from day one. And if it wasn't for your support and the support of other organizations that believed in us from the beginning, we wouldn't be able to be where we are today. And then in terms of startups, I mean, I still say this to this day, the startups, the entrepreneurs are the heart and soul of what we do at Emerge. They truly are the glue of what brings everybody else to Emerge as well. Everybody wants to hear an entrepreneur's story. Everybody wants to connect with them. Everybody wants to potentially partner with them, invest in them. And essentially at Emerge, if these entrepreneurs succeed, whether they stay in Miami or not, it still helps the, the ecosystem because they were here, they told their story, they potentially connected with a partner with a global brand that helped them expand in Latin America or in Europe or in Asia. But essentially at the end of the day, it came back to that connection that happened here at Emerge. So for us, our work with entrepreneurs and the social impact that we can create sort of that snowball effect throughout the region and the region mean, meaning all of the Southeast US and Latin America is at the core of everything we do throughout the entire year at Emerge. Well, I think you're in a really unique position also to talk about. A lot of people think when you do these events that are just so important for everyone else, they think you have to be a nonprofit. And so many times people get confused about, you can't do social and make a profit. And I think what you've been able to build with Emerge with investment and incredible partners really tells the story of you can do well by doing good. Can you share some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, for Emerge, we've always been an extremely mission-driven organization. Emerge Americas is an LLC. It is a for-profit. But for us, it's all about the core mission, which hasn't changed from day one which is to continue to help build a thriving tech ecosystem here. And we've grown as a company, as an organization, of course. The conference itself has grown dramatically over the last decade. And this year we had over 20,000 people attend, representing over 50 countries. But even as our organization grows, the heart and soul of what we do, the mission and the impact that we create 
is always, always, always top of mind. And that is how can we help entrepreneurs? How, how can we continue to help build a thriving tech ecosystem? And how could we help the next generation of entrepreneurs and of innovators? Um, as a mom, I'm constantly thinking about, you know, how can we make sure that we're creating a knowledge-based economy for the next generation? How can we make sure that what we're doing is creating a social impact that's going to better their future um, as well? I think the other thing that we should definitely talk about is so, so many times as an entrepreneur, there are all these ideas and all these things coming at you. And you've done such an incredible job staying focused and evolving, bringing in new concepts and making every year better, but really staying true to the mission. Can you speak to the challenge of focus and how you and your team have been able to continue to deliver with that focus in mind? Yeah, it's a great point. And it's hard. It's really hard to stay focused sometimes. I think, you know, if you've read about what's going on in South Florida, in Miami, there truly is a global lens now on us, especially over the last two to two and a half years, which wasn't the case when we first launched in, in 2012. Um, so now, you know, we continue to think, oh my gosh, we could do this and we could do that and we can add this component. And we truly see ourselves as a platform. Where Emerge America's the conference, which we're most, most well known for, is our temple event. But we have a whole portfolio of other things that we do, including publishing insight reports. We have our own magazine. We push out digital content throughout the entire year from newsletters and videos. We're almost like a media platform as well. And there could be a lot of distractions when you're when you have so many different components. Um, to a business. But I think one thing I would say is make sure that you're sticking to, you know, the core of what it is that you want to build. And it took us a while to get where we are today. From the beginning, circa 2012, our mission was to grow the conference. We needed that to be successful if we wanted to expand our business in other ways. We had to concentrate on that. Our entire team, all hands on deck had to be, the event had to be successful and it almost had to have a life of its own before we would think, even think about creating all of these other components or spokes, if you will, um, to our organization. So I would say my advice would be stick to what you know best, stick to your core mission for as long as possible. When that is almost running itself in a way, then you could think of how can I expand on this and you know, increase other opportunities that, that come your way. Well, we'll be coming back to Melissa and we'll definitely be hearing more about Emerge and opportunities for you all to be involved. And most importantly, the winners of the Social Ideas Challenge actually get to attend Emerge and pitch on the stage. So that's something for the lucky people to look forward to. Thank you, Melissa. See you in a minute. Thanks, Rodolfo, Susan. Rodolfo, welcome. I'm really excited for you to share the story of Mycobytes. On to you. Hi. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, 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 wait for a moment. I need to share the. Okay. Okay, okay. So, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Rodolfo Ulloa, and I'm the co founder and co CEO of Microbytes. Uh, my life as an entrepreneur started in 2015. Uh, before that, uh, I worked in an NGO. Uh, called Techo, uh, looking for new ways to obtain funding. Um, when I stopped uh, working at Techo, I started looking for new opportunities. Uh, uh, I applied to all kinds of jobs, uh, but uh, I didn't find any opportunity that makes sense to me. So uh, then, uh, in the last part of uh, 2015, uh, I decided to do something different. Uh, I joined other people uh, to find a new opportunity to develop uh, a business idea. Um, and in, the, in that moment, uh, my father sent me an article about a new kind of mushroom. Uh, in this case, uh, the shiitake mushrooms um, that have excellent properties uh, for people consumption. Uh, then, in the last, uh, at, at that moment, I tried to learn how to produce a kind of mushroom. Um, 
So uh, we started to learn and we sold the first production batch uh, in July of 2016. Um, we projected uh, the business like a B2B company selling to restaurants. Uh, but then uh, in, in 2017, yes, 2017, um, we changed uh, the business model, the core business, uh, and we started to, to creating and develop uh, a new a, a new business idea to to sell to sell um, a mushroom by products. But since 2020, we have changed in every way to transform us in microbytes, uh, a startup uh, which is a food tech platform that develops uh, the best and unique fungi fungi based food fungi based food in the world, uh, creating a non-ultra processed food uh, in a sustainable way. So um, uh, I try uh, to respond uh, to some answer, um, how creating social impact as an entrepreneur. Uh, so uh, in the last few years, uh, we started to notice uh, some uh, of the big problems in the food industry, uh, which impact both the planet and people's health. Um, uh, the World Health Organiza uh, Organization established that heart diseases are the first cause of global deaths uh, and are commonly related or uh, related with the, uh, with obesity and unhealthy habits. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Institute of Agriculture and Trade Policy uh, conclude that the livestock, the livestock sector um, uh, produce or are responsible uh, for 32% of total emissions of methane gas worldwide, that it's a big contributor to climate change. So we ask ourselves, uh, how do we feed 10 billion people uh, in a healthy and sustainable way by 2050? Uh, and our solution was to create a sustainable business model, uh, creating and using our food tech platform, the Micromix, developing a new category of food, uh, the fungi based food, uh, but most importantly, a new kind of company, Microbytes. So for that, uh, firstly, we create products uh, that generate less contaminants and use fewer resources. Uh, to measure that, we use the life cycle assessment methodology um, and our products are grouped in the frozen meat substitutes uh, category. Uh, and if we compare uh, them uh, with the similar, with their similar uh, uh, beef, uh, beef based uh, uh, products, we can say, for example, um, at least uh, we use 98% uh, less of land and we generate a 90% less CO2 equivalent. Uh, also, uh, uh, all of our products are created to be non ultra processed. Um, the, ba the basis of our creations has been um, the use of natural ingredients, um, using as the main ingredients uh, a combination of different kinds of mushrooms. So we restrict the number of ingredients uh, in every product and only use uh, non-ultra processed uh, ingredients. But uh, the question that we need to answer, why mushrooms? Uh, they are everywhere and so adaptable. Uh, there are more than 5 million of species and we only know the 5% of them uh, we can use in a lot of uh, areas, for example, uh, to create medical solutions, to develop uh, um, food and ingredients, and also to create, for example, biomaterials. Uh, mushrooms have um, very good properties or excellent properties to be a very good materi raw materials, like uh, the texture, the umami flavor, or for example, um, the, uh, the water retention. So um, how, we, how we have created social impact, it's a big question that we need to respond. So in this case, uh, I believe every entrepreneurship and entrepreneur uh, should create social impact at least in one way, uh, in one way. Establishing their business model and their vision uh, can make an impact in people's lives and the environment. But 
they not only need to, pre to, to create a base on abstract ideas. In fact, it is really important uh, to take concrete actions. For example, uh, in our case, we're investing some of your business profits into the community or um, adding some restrictions uh, in your process of creation to protect the environment uh, or some stakeholders. Then uh, we need to, to, uh, to, to answer uh, how being part of the chain by becoming an entrepreneur. And in this case, uh, we, we know and we define the society and the world need new kind of people that take care of their problems, uh, but most importantly, to create a new way of development, a sustainable way, making it a priority. Uh, so if we went uh, to, make a real to make real changes in the world, uh, we need people who do things uh, in a different way, uh, breaking the old paradigms and prioritizing the collective uh, well-being over maximizing their profits. So um, I ask you to please take time to think and create new solutions to society. Uh, if you persevere uh, and make an effort to develop your ideas, uh, you can also help change the world. Just remember that nowadays, uh, you have to take into account new variables, like for example, uh, the respect for the environment, uh, the well-being of people, and also uh, to be a profitable business. So now I'll share with you uh, a teaser video um, to help motivate you to make your dreams become reality like I've been doing. And uh, now. Can you can you hear the uh, the the video? No. No, I think you have to share it with the sound. Uh, yeah. Um, wait for a moment. Uh, and as human beings, yeah. we are in a constant pursuit of that which is unique. Some look for it in the skies, hoping to find something in the vastness of the universe. But our dream was not up there, but here, under our feet. We can't always see them, but they are everywhere. We are not talking about plants or animals. We are talking about mushrooms, a never-ending network that silently bounds us all and keeps nature in balance. For so long, we innocently gazed at them until one day we saw beyond. We discovered a highly nourishing food source, an ancient medicine, a sustainable organism that has the power to transform life as we know it. It took years of study to even begin to understand its cycles. Or so we could create something unique, something truly groundbreaking that requires not even half of the resources that other edibles need for their production. Something that would transform the way we feed humanity. This, for us, is a dream come true. Maybe this sounds like a lot of science talk, but it's not. It's just nature. Are you prepared for something new? Get ready for fungi-based food. Mycobites. Well, Rodolfo, you've successfully inspired and made us all <laughs> extremely hungry. So congratulations. Thank we'll you, be coming you. back to you in the panel. Thank you again for that really insightful and, and thoughtful way of sharing your story. Love it. Magali Bloss, welcome. I'm really excited to hear all the work you're doing with Mama River. And I know you have a presentation as well, correct? Yes, so thank you very much for the invitation to talk about Mamas de Rio, which means Mother of the River. And it's a program actually that aims to improve maternal and newborn health in remote areas in the Peruvian and now in the Colombian Amazon. 
So I want to tell you a little bit about the story of how Mamas de Rio was created. And basically, it was created because of a combination of some events. One was that I carried my two pregnancies while working in the Amazon doing research on infectious diseases. So during this time, I was able to witness all the huge gap in access to healthcare that women and their families face in the Amazon. Basically, they didn't have access to water, electricity, or sanitation. They have to travel hours by river to get to a healthcare facility that was under poor condition and without basic anything, without was unable to provide any basic care, really. So when a newborn dies in a community, they are very at the community, they don't even get to a healthcare facility. So that death is not counted in the Peruvian statistics. In fact, it's estimated that there is 50% of underreporting of newborn deaths in the Amazon. So at that time, for me, it was clear that I wanted to switch from infectious diseases to maternal and child health. And I was working at the School of Public Health at Cayetano Herede University when I received a call for applications from Grand Challenges Canada and the Peruvian Council of Science and Technology and they were looking for bold ideas. So I decided to submit a project. And uh, when I had to type the name of the project, I remember the woman I saw along the Marañón River in Loreto. And so Mamas de Rio came to my mind, which means mother of the river. And that is how we started first with a pilot from Grand Challenges Canada and Concitec, the Peruvian Council of Science and Technology. Then we got a transition to scale grant from both funders. And now we're working with the Inter-American Development Bank and the Ministry of External Affairs of Peru and Colombia. So in Mamas de Rio, we are implementing a community health worker program strengthened with an app for tablets to improve essential newborn care outcomes. And we are not reinventing the wheel. Basically, several studies have shown that community health worker home visits can reduce neonatal mortality in 25%. And in the communities where we work, community health workers are the only source of healthcare promotion and disease prevention. Now, the innovative aspect of our program is that we give technology to community health workers. And basically, technology helps them a lot. For example, the tablet that has the application can guide community health workers to the visit. They can remind the community health workers that they have to do a home visit. Also, the tablets help the community health workers deliver culturally relevant and standardized prevention messages. And through the tablets, the community health workers can gather health data and that can be later sent to decision makers. And you can read our publications about that. So what are the components of Mamas de Rio? We have a community component in which a community health worker conducts home visits to pregnant women and newborns. We also train traditional birth attendants in how to conduct essential newborn care, and we do community sensibilization. We also train healthcare staff in essential newborn care outcomes, and all of this is supported by a supervision component. So what are the activities of the community health workers? Community health workers identify pregnant women, they are trained to do pregnancy tests, and they also conduct Three home visits during the pregnancy and three home visits after the delivery, and they have several tools, like an mHealth application with a standardized content. They have BERT, an emergency plan, cards, essential newborn care educational cards, danger signs posters. They have also pregnancy tests and clean delivery kits and newborn waiting scales. So the community health workers can gather health data from pregnant women and newborns and can send it to decision makers so that they can act on it. So thanks to this information, we know where are the pregnant women and newborns along the communities where we operate. And we have done an evaluation of this intervention. So this is our protocol. It's in the repository of the London School of Hygiene, of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And basically our program, the evaluation of our program has two objectives. One is to conduct a before and after study to assess changes in essential newborn care practices and healthcare seeking over a three-year period. And we have also conducted a mixed methods process evaluation of all the components of the intervention. So I want to mention about the first objective, briefly the results. So we have worked in 79 rural communities along 250 
kilometers of the river in Loreto, where we have done the evaluation of our intervention. And what we have found, and we're still in the process of finishing the paper, is that we were able to increase almost all essential new worker practices, like for example, early skin to skin contact, early breastfeeding, give colostrum to the baby because women before Mamas de Rio discarded the colostrum, and also exclusive breastfeeding. We were also able to increase a sterile cord cut, sterile cord tying, no damaging substance applied to the cord, and early waiting. So these are they were super good news for us. And we have developed processes along all the components of Mamas de Rio to make this program replicable and scalable. So we, in terms of scaling the program, were called by the Minister of External Affairs of Peru and Colombia to present our program to the binational plan in this presidential meeting of the presidents of Peru and Colombia. And this program was approved. And now we're implementing this program Remember, we, I show you here where we conducted the pilot and then the first scale up of our intervention and evaluation. And now we are here in the border between Peru and Colombia in 30 communities in both countries. Um, Mama Serio was successfully adapted by Colombia and supported by the Inter-American Development Bank and the Minister of External Affairs of both countries. And we have received an extension of the program and we are going to increase the number of communities where we operate within the next two years. So this is the picture of the first training of the community health workers in both programs. Um, so we were a maternal and newer health program that had to adapt to fight COVID in our communities and we did so very well. Thanks to the training of community health workers, we were able to deploy prevention material to more than 16,000 people in four rivers in Peru and Colombia. We were also able to train community health workers in what is and how to prevent COVID in the community. So the community health workers did not only promote maternal health, but also were able to prevent COVID in their communities. Also, when the health centers closed, the community health workers continue to do home visits. And I think during the pandemic, and we're doing this analysis, the community health workers were the only who provided health care to their communities. Also, they received training on the importance of COVID vaccination, and they were important advocates during the vaccination campaigns in their community. So as a conclusion, I will say that the community health worker programs can improve essential new worker practices in Amazonian communities. Um, and we have results that show that. And our intervention was also able to adapt to fight COVID. And this is the importance of social innovation. They are very adaptable. And also, we are advocating now for community health workers to become part of the health system in Peru and Colombia. I want to end by thanking our partners and our funders. And also, if you have any questions, this is my email. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing. That's just incredibly inspirational. I'm so happy there are people like you in the world. That's amazing. Uh, last but not least, Juan Diego, welcome to the conversation. Can you share the story of Payphone? And as the founding CTO, I'm sure there have been some bumps in the road. Thank you very much for the invitation. Really, these events help us to awaken that curiosity and encourage us to take that step with an idea that is going around in our heads. In my experience in Payphone, I can tell you nine years ago, a group of friends got together to think of ideas that would really lead to innovation. We were still not clear about the, this amazing idea, but we knew that we had to dedicate ourselves 100% to do it well. So we took a big step and quick our our jobs. Um, we thought that the smartphones will eventually be part of people's daily lives and it should also be used to pay anywhere in a corner store or in a big company. Uh, after many hours of hard work, um, we came up with a business model and a prototype to show this vision where we all could pay and get paid for our, our smartphones. 
And along the way, um, there were several, several obstacles. And even remember, especially one of the many, many meetings we have with banks, they told us uh, that we have to have a PCI certification. And I told them, of course, there is no problem. We will bring you that certification. But as soon as I left the building, I opened Google and I wrote, what is PCI certification? Because I had no idea. Then I understood it was a very, very complicated certification. Then I Googled what is the average cost of obtaining this certification. And I understood uh, that not even with all our savings, we were going to be able to pay for this. We got a little discouraged, but we told ourselves we will get the money anyway, because a great idea like this is priceless. So we start uh, with a round of, of friends and family and got uh, what was necessary to develop the system and all the architecture in the cloud. Once we develop the first version of the software, we look for more investment, smart money. So we partnered uh, with security companies that will, that will help us to obtain the certifications of security and develop them companies that will support us in creating a more solid system with the best technology. Well, this is a brief history of some of the steps we, we followed to create this payment ecosystem that already works in five countries. And I can tell you the, the persistence is the key. Do not be discouraged by the difficulties or mistakes. Everything is learning. If we persist in our objectives, the solutions will appear along the way. Um, with Payphone is an ecosystem where you can download an app in a two minutes start receiving payments and from, our, from your customers, or you can also send payments to people or businesses. We have two apps, apps one for customers or, or business. Let me share a little. Little slide. Okay. I'm having a problem with the presentation because it's a video that's in. Well, you're used to much more complex technology than screen sharing, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but I saw I saw really nice there, zero on international transaction costs, which is extremely appealing. Yeah, yes, you're okay. honestly, oh, please go ahead. Yes, uh, because the, our motivation is the financial inclusion, inclusion because uh, payphone is for everyone. Doesn't matter if you are the, the corner store, small business, a startup, or you are a big company, you can use payphone because it, it, our business model is very interesting because you can make payments customer to customer, customer to business, business to business, business to customer, therefore in every possible way. And there isn't a fee. If you make payments between a uh, payphone user and if you want to transfer the money, you can, uh, you can transfer to the personal bank account. It has a little commission. Also, you have a several options to use Payphone, like payment link, scan QR, payment button, payment request, prepaid card, Payphone MasterCard. 
pay utility bills, recharge menus with your mobile operator, a lot of options. The, the customers, the users, pay phones, they, they, are, they are really, really happy to use this system. I think you're probably the most positive CTO in the entire hemisphere. So congratulations on that. As you. as you and your co-founders have gone through this journey, what have been the biggest challenges in building a team and adding to this co-founding team that had a vision and a mission? How do you continue to add more people that add to that culture and are as committed to this mission as you guys are? The team is the most the most important thing in the company because we are the team. There isn't a company. Yes, we have a, a we need time to 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 have conversation with all the people with all the employees because it's it's very very important uh, to talk about. What is the vision? What is the motivation of our, our company? How I say the our motivation is the financial inclusion, and everybody has to know that is the motivation, and everybody has to 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 tell everyone how is uh, use pay from uh, in in your experience. And I'm gonna ask you the same question I gave Melissa because it's a really big challenge, especially as the CTO. I'm sure people are always coming up with ideas for you and your team of new features, new functionality. How do you keep everybody focused on the roadmap for continuing to, to have the mission be driven? You, you need a, a, a methodology because you, you need a system everyone has to 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 be to be clear with the with all the 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 task with all the activities you have to to learn to use all the all the all the systems in payphone because you have to to create a an, an organization culture So I'm sure it's about managing process and fe and features and and road mapping and technology, which we're, I'm sure all of us are dealing with. Same for Magali. Why don't we while we wait for Juan Diego to come back on, Magali, can you discuss that? We'll turn it over to the panel now. Can you discuss how you're probably able to get incredible insights? from your partners on the ground about new features, new functions, additional things to add as you grow the platform and, and go into this new country. Can you talk about what you've been learning during that time? And, and again, how you make sure you're keeping it as simple as possible for your partners on the ground? Sure. Basically, we have done a lot of formative research that is published in several uh, review journals. And we I didn't present this in the interest of time, but we did like 60 in deep interviews with several like groups, women who had uh, a child recently within the last year, their partners, community health workers, traditional birth attendants, and all improve the design of our intervention. We develop a pilot and then we tested the pilot and we redo the intervention and we tested it again. So it was a lot of iterative processes in the whole system, but also within the app. Actually, that was a master thesis, um, that evaluation of how the app, the application in the tablet can improve. And it was a long process. I mean, we did a pilot within one year and a half, and also redesigning the intervention because we started with a cell phone and then we went to a tablet because it can de deploy better the videos that were co-created with the communities, and this is important, we co-created the videos with the communities through a process called photo voice and storytelling, it's also published, was very important because 
when you ask women, what do you think about the intervention? Of all the components of the intervention, they remind most the videos that are in the tablets because they say it's like my mother was or is talking to me because the videos include the stories of the families in the communities. So including the communities in the design was very important for our intervention to be effective. That's amazing. And Rodolfo, I've had some amazing mushroom tea. What's your process for innovating new cool things with the fungi you're finding? I'm very excited to figure out how I can go on a hunt with you one day. Um, What's the process? We, we create a, a platform. like um, It's like a methodology. Um, we, start, we started with a database of all kinds of mushrooms. Uh, with multiple variables. Um, so with that information, uh, we, we standardize and create a new kind of recipes. Um, uh, for example, uh, if you want to create, I don't know, some tea, uh, we obtain the, the, the composition, the, 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 not the ingredients, it's more like um, the, the composition of the, uh, uh, the composition of their of their components uh, and and we we start uh, to to obtain some information about our database and with the database we have uh, we have the possibility to create uh, for example one tea using a different kind of mushrooms for example mushrooms that uh, you have in us or i have in chile or magali has uh, in peru Peru, yeah, see, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and um, so our our main um, development is the way that we create our products. Our products are really nice, are fantastic, <laughs> but but the methodology that uh, we have been created is uh, it's a, it's the most important. So now we are. Um, Continue with the process. We we create uh, we start with a, an optimization model. Like uh, then we need to to use like a, a simulation process and uh, I don't know um, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, things like that because uh, we need to create something different, but using all the technology that we. We, we can to use, um, but always mushrooms uh, will be the, the main ingredients, the main, I don't know, the, the main everything for us. <laughs> Melissa, I'm sensing we have to figure out how we're going to have a food stand or something featuring Rodolfo. Like, I agree. I, I agree. Know how I help. You know how we have like e-gov, we have different e-summits. I'm thinking this whole e-food or EF agriculture. Uh, yes, exactly. E I, I will volunteer to help. Um, <laughs> but but share with us some of the new things we have to look forward to at Emerges here and the exciting announcement made on Monday. Uh, yes, sounds good. Um, so this past Monday, we officially opened applications for our global Emerge America startup showcase. So if you have, uh, if you're building a company, this is all different stages. So if, whether you're a student, early stage, late stage, there is a category for everybody. I encourage you to apply and we will choose 100 companies. So usually it's around 200 founders if there's co-founders in the companies to be part of a seven week virtual program leading up to Emerge. So think seven weeks before April 20th and 21st of 2023. And it all culminates at Emerge America's the conference where all the startups will be given expo space. We'll go through a whole Shark Tank style competition. We'll make endless connections and priceless connections with over 20,000 people. And then the winner of the showcase wins a $420,000 investment into their company. And I think the most exciting part is that it does not cost anything to apply, not if you're chosen. And we've done that from the beginning of Emerge and that kind of goes back to us really focusing on entrepreneurs 
and knowing that many of them are bootstrapping and that connections are key for building a company. And so as much as we can provide to entrepreneurs at no cost to them, we do. And I apologize for the background noise. Um, I have children. That's all I could say. <laughs> oh, it's a shock. There hasn't been craziness at my house. So yeah. And they didn't have school today because of the storm. So this is just, you know. Well, your power stayed on. So. I know my power stayed on and my Wi-Fi is stable, which hasn't been all day. So the, you know, the stars have aligned. <laughs> Knock on wood. Well, Juan Diego just came back on. So he's on a phone because of electrical issues as well. I'm going to pass the, we have a couple of questions coming in from the Q&A. So Juan Diego, can you hear me okay? Or did we lose him again? Okay. Well, I'm going to take this back to Rodolfo then. What's the key to differentiating a social enterprise from a traditional one? Do you have any thoughts on that? The, the key or, or the difference between the, that kind of uh, the traditional- The key to and... differentiate. How do you make sure your, your social enterprise is positioned and communicated and branded versus when you're doing a traditional food company, right? Um, in our case, uh, we try to promote and to publish all the information that uh, we want, we want to, to promote, but it is important uh, to say to people um, that, for example, in our case, our brand, uh, trying to, to explain that we not only use mushrooms like our main ingredient, we also believe that mushrooms are uh, the future for uh, a lot of areas, for example. And if you create something, uh, you need to, uh, to establish that, that, that idea, that, uh, that concept that move your, move your soul, move your, <laughs> your, your intentions and everything to, to create uh, your startup, uh, your business, your company, uh, because when, for, for example, uh, people that uh, create a traditional company, uh, the idea is to maximize uh, the, the profit, for example. But if you include uh, some new ideas, like, uh, for example, the stock options, uh, incorporate all your employees in your company uh, uh, using the stock options uh, like a, not give, it's more like a, a process uh, to involve in, in, in your culture or in your business idea, business company. Uh, you make a difference, uh, a, a real big difference, but also if you, if, if you want to, to, to communicate the difference, you need to use uh, all the 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 mean the all the the ways to communicate the the real message uh, in Chile, well, for I example. Think, I think you uh, did an incredible job in your deck itself talking about the CO two emissions, the use of land. I mean, I've seen a lot of decks for companies, especially around food and consumer packaged goods, and I I think the the key thing that that you've done so well in telling your story is yes, it's a product and it tastes good and it takes beautiful pictures, I must say. <laughs> but the impact of the land and the social impact piece of the environment, I think really is a big differentiator there. So I'm, you know, applauding you on every level and I cannot wait to try everything you're making at Emerge next year. Um, we, 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 have send, to, we send oh, samples to, also to send Miami. Samples. Yes, do that too. Do that too. No, no, okay. no, we sent to some uh, the, to some retailer. Okay. Oh, great. Um, we have to finish up. So I have one final question that came in, and I'm going to toss it to Melissa. How do you imagine the future of startups in our continent? Wow, that is a a fantastic question. Um, I, you know, what I think is that startups entrepreneurs are sort of the engine of the future across our world and i think there's um no better time for entrepreneurs to build things in especially in in um 
atmospheres or in times of uncertainty, which I know there's a lot of um, these days. And I think that's when the best ideas are built. And I think uh, there really is no future without incredible entrepreneurs and founders. So I can't imagine a world um, without incredible entrepreneur entrepreneurs. Well, it's really been an honor for me to be the moderator for this discussion with such distinguished entrepreneurs themselves who were just like all of us, saw a problem, could not sleep without solving it, and every single day are making an impact, not just in their own lives and then the lives around them, but with people they'll never get to meet. And it really is palpable when you when you commit yourself to solve these common problems. So I applaud all of you. Thank you very much. And with no further ado, I'm happy to pass it over to Cecilia Sanchez. Thank you, Susan. And um, thank you all to our wonderful panelists to share your, your inspiring stories about what brought you into the, the spaces you are now in. Uh, we are sure that a lot of our students uh, from around our institutions are taking note and are looking around and trying to see where they can have an impact. And we hope that this, uh, this challenge really uh, does that for them. So um, I would ask um, the presentation to thank you to be put up. And um, I will spend a couple of slides just talking and providing you all some, um, some details about the challenge itself. Um, the background is, um, as was mentioned at the very on start, uh, Universidad Pontificia Católica de Chile um, had been doing this in, in Chile, uh, in their institution, and had such a great response um, that they brought it to the uh, Hemispheric University Consortium, where we are um, all of the participating institutions are members of. And um, we had the first go around last year, as you were able to see in the, in the video. And the challenge um, really focuses on, um, on bringing this social and sustainable entrepreneurship as a topic of discussion, a topic of conversation among the students and among our uh, universities. Um, another uh, objective of the uh, challenge is to expose um, our students to this truly international experiential learning opportunity. We have uh, institutions, as was mentioned, from, from Mexico, uh, Chile, Peru, the United States, and we'll all be you know, playing a role and, and sharing um, in, in, this, uh, in this new journey together. The uh, challenge provides a network uh, platform for uh, students, and uh, we hopefully will, will have the opportunity for you to share your common interests, uh, perhaps share some of the challenges you will face. Um, the, uh, the challenge, the, the social ideas challenge also um, aims to, to bring us a better understanding of the social and environmental challenges that we experience um, both as a local community, as a regional community, and as a global community. And um, here, uh, re-emphasizing that the challenge is really framed within the UN Sustainability Development Goals and specifically the, um, the social and environmental goals. There's about 11 of those. And, um, and so you, you, it gives you an opportunity to learn more about them. Um, and um, which is, it's really the, the, the plan that our world um, collectively has to move forward in some of the biggest challenges that we face um, as a global community. And, and finally, the, uh, the Social Ideas Challenge really aims to generate ideas for solutions. Solutions to, you know, face to address these socioeconomic problems in our, in our communities. And um, that's really the seed, right, of, of any entrepreneur. Um, the, 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 finding, um, the finding problems to face and then finding solutions to 
to address them. So these, this uh, challenge, it takes place in basically, we've, um, we've um, framed it within four stages. Uh, the first stage is, is tonight. It's the international launch. It's getting all of you to, to learn about the, the challenge, to um, maybe go out and, and speak to classmates and, um, and uh, other students about this opportunity. Uh, we heard a lot this uh, earlier today from the panelists about teams. So, you know, search, uh, search for, for colleagues that are interested in the same things you might be interested in, and also go beyond perhaps your own, um, your own um, major and, um, and look for, a, for somebody in a, in a different school. Um, it's a great opportunity to do something interdisciplinarily. The, uh, the teams are, are, will be um, two to four. That's the guidelines we have. So we have uh, pen, plenty of space to bring in uh, the different perspectives from, from folks um, and create that really strong team to, to have a great idea and a great uh, solution. This, this uh, stage one um, takes place for about a month. These, uh, this is when applications are open, teams are formed, and ideas are, are first created. Uh, the closing of the application process is on the 31st of October for us in, in the US, that's Halloween. Um, so mark your calendars and, and start thinking about how to um, participate. The stage two is, um, is when we start consol so consolidating some of these ideas. And that in that stage, we will have the great opportunity to um, provide some workshops um, giving you some of those tools that will um, help you throughout the, the challenge itself and hopefully provide you with, uh, with some great tools moving forward in um, your career as students and then as um, entrepreneurs and, and business people um, into, into your careers and your career paths. And this year we're doing something a little bit different. Um, we may need to find a different uh, title for the, what we're calling the closing event, but uh, this event is going to be taking place on the, on the 16th of November. And at that event, everyone who's participated, everyone who's put a, an application in will have the opportunity to meet everyone else. So we'll do this virtually, of course, but there we'll, we'll try to pair you up with other people in other countries and other institutions that have similar interests. So will that'll be, be taking place, like I said, on uh, November 16th. And then we'll, we'll go into the, the stage three of the process and uh, the different institutions will be taking, uh, will be carrying out the local finals at in that stage. And that'll basically be from November to uh, possibly the beginning of February. Keep an eye out to when those local finals will take place. And that is where, um, you know, the, the different juries, the different judges will, in the, in the institutions, in the countries, will decide the winning teams. And that takes us to the final stage, which is when those winning teams from each of the participating uh, schools will, will meet here in Miami for the international meeting, as was uh, alluded to, and as we saw in the video at the very beginning, um, that will take place at Emerge Americas on stage, and you'll have a great opportunity there to uh, to highlight your ideas, to um, to pitch in front of a huge audience, um, and I might add a really energetic uh, place. And after the event, that'll just be the beginning because everyone will have the opportunity to, um, to visit Emerge, to listen to all of the fantastic stories that take place there and to visit the different, uh, the different booths um, that will be promoting um, a whole series of, of innovative and, and um, innovative products and innovative ideas. And hopefully that, that includes um, some of the delicious foods that we saw earlier in, in the uh, presentations. Um, here, before I move on to the criteria, um, I just want, I want to highlight that not only the winners of the different uh, finals are winners, it's, it's amazing how many of the, 
of the of the ideas that began last year and that maybe weren't chosen have continued and have gathered strength and so um so here I, it's just it's just really like i said a great opportunity um for those ideas to gain strength and and move forward um obviously to make a, a an impact in our different communities and um, so the next the next slide, as as is indicated, is the criteria. This is what all of the teams are going to be uh, judged on. Uh, they're going to be judged on the relevance of the problem you choose, the creativity and innovation that you identify as a solution to that problem, the potential impact that the problem will have, and um, that includes, you know, will will it impact, you know, ten people. Or, or 20 people. So a little bit of the scalability falls into this category. Then the feasibility of applying that solution. I mean, is this something that we'll be able to carry out? And then finally, the quality of the presentation. Now in all of those aspects, you know, the workshops and hopefully in your different countries, mentorship that is provided to you will help strengthen will help strengthen that those different criteria upon which you will be um, you will be judged. Uh, I'll just add that the pre-selection that takes place um, basically before um, at the end of stage uh, state between stage one and stage two. And there is it's just making sure that you know that the teams are aligned, that you've met all the guidelines. So this is the timeline. Um, Today is the launch. Applications start at the very end of this launch with uh, with kind of the official countdown. And um, applications are due by the 31st of October. You'll have uh, the next slide will provide the uh, place that you have to log into to submit your applications. Uh, the pre-selection is what I mentioned, just making sure those who, who submit their applications are students and, um, you know, and you have uh, kind of the basic um requirements from the guidelines the next phase is the workshops and the event where all of you will be able to meet each other and then that the kind of three three or so months where um where the local uh, finals will be taking place and where you know hopefully you'll be you'll be working on your on your pitches perfecting some of that uh for those of for those who um end up representing your schools. And finally, in April, you uh, will be able to come to Miami, um, launch at Emerge Americas. You will also be invited to a program at uh, University of Miami, uh, we, which, is, which is hosted by our Hyperion Council, which is a great group of, of students. And uh, this year, we know that we have an additional uh, an additional great element, which is that Premios Verdes, which is a, a Latin-based um, organization, will be having their annual conference the same week on different days, but the same week as uh, Emerge Americas. And that's also a, um, a platform that um, emphasizes environmental and social uh, entrepreneurial in endeavors. So that'll be a great week here in Miami. Uh, as I mentioned, here are the, um, here's how you apply. So um, these are the, um, this is the, the code to submit your ideas. Um, and uh, you probably, before you do that, you should take a, a quick uh, look at the guidelines, making sure that you're uh, fulfilling the, the requirements. Um, and if you have any questions, please reach out to um, your representative at, at the school you're in to, um, to have those, uh, those addressed. And at the very bottom there, you see those 11 um, uh, SDGs, the, the Sustainable Development Goals, that really focus on the social and environmental components. That's our roadmap to become a better, a better world by 20. Uh, 30. So, um, you know, if you haven't done so already, do uh, research those and see all of the, the areas where your idea can really have an impact um, in making our world a better place. 
So I think with that, we are ready to count down and actually begin the launch. So um, three, two, one, submit your ideas. And uh, thank you again for uh, joining us this, uh, this evening. Some of us um, here in, in stormy uh, South Florida, uh, from Chile, from Peru, uh, from all of our joining uh, institutions. Um, really excited to start this, uh, this new version of the uh, Social Ideas Challenge. So with that said, uh, thank you all again. Thank you, our panelists. Thank you so much, Dr. Susan Amat, for moderating and um, ho hoping to have a wonderful um, new um, Social Ideas Challenge of the Hemispheric University Consortium. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good luck. Thank you. And thank you for the wonderful panelists. Bye. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Goodbye.